my name is Jaya Luintel. Uh, I uh, work with the Story Kitchen, uh, which uh, we founded in uh, 2012. It's been five years, and I'm from Nepal. Uh, today, I'm talking about I'm talking a little bit about feminism and intersectionality, and I'm really uh, very glad that Dolby Center in Australia, you know, has initiated this work, uh, which is really very important issue to talk about. And I'll be sharing, you know, a few stories uh, around our work in Nepal. And first of all, I'd like to, you know, share what, you know, feminism means to us. For us, uh, feminism in our work, you know, it means uh, equality and uh, beyond equality, justice. And it is not only for one group of people, it is for all. So justice and equality for all, that is feminism for us. And uh, we work, but we work with you know women of different sectors, different age, different ethnicity, different class, different caste, and we wanted to create a space for women of all these you know uh, intersections or of all these you know background to come together and and share their stories and listen to their stories and learn from uh, each other. So basically, it is uh, uh, it is a space. The story kitchen itself is a space where we are trying to amplify women's voices and women's stories. And we use the, the media tools, the traditional media tools and the new media tools to bring out their stories. We believe that women are not voiceless, uh, their voice uh, is being silenced. Uh, so Story Kitchen is a space where we are trying to bring uh, out those voices and create a space. And our work particularly, we, we initiated the Story Kitchen with two objectives because the, the mainstream media in Nepal and globally as well, uh, the name itself says, you know, mainstream, but sometimes we, we consider it as M-E-N, mainstream. Uh, we are not against men, definitely, but we are against the system which is oppressing uh, women and which is uh, putting the people at margin and which are you know giving privilege to one group of people and not you know considering other people as human being and then we also wanted to you know challenge the mainstream media which is so male dominated and and the voices of women and women in the news are still like you know 24% uh, uh, are the women who are uh, being you know uh, portrayed as subject in the news and still 80% of the experts in the news are uh, male and spokesperson. If you look into this data, it is all like, you know, men stream uh, media in, in Nepal and globally as well. So what we wanted to do is create a space so that this mainstream media also, you know, could have access to women's stories. And when we say women's stories, it is not about only women's stories or, or their life, but their perspectives, you know, uh, the women's perspectives in politics, women's perspective in economics, women's perspective in, in societal issues. So we are trying to bring women's perspective in all sectors uh, in our society. Uh, that is what we have been doing. And we, through the stories of women, we really want to, you know, establish women as doers, makers and creators, which they are not considered as. And we are also, you know, trying to establish women as experts, because what our authority, you know, says that when you have certificate or when you go to, you know, big universities, uh, then only you become experts. But what we consider uh, is that the, the knowledge that you have the knowledge you have gained through your experience or the knowledge you have you know gained through your work that should also be considered as your knowledge and that makes you the expert so that's how you know we are we are working another objective uh, of uh, establishing a story kitchen uh, was uh, to look into the history of nepal from women's perspective the word itself says history is a story so it is missing, you know, we, we felt that it, it is missing something. So it did miss a whole like women's perspective in the history. So um, Story Kitchen is also a space to uh, look into the history from, uh, you know, women's perspective, basically her story, looking for her stories in our history. So we thought that, you know, what could be the nearest history 
for us in Nepal to go through and then to look what women faced and how women did contribute in terms of all these you know political changes in Nepal so we thought that you know Nepal was going through Nepal is still going through transitional justice process and women's voices women survivors of armed conflict who were you know victimized during Nepal's you know 10 years of armed conflict their voice was not uh, being part of uh, this transitional justice process and their voices were being silenced so three years ago you know we started this work and and we were you know fairly new organization in terms of organization and UN trust fund to end violence against women uh, you know supported our idea and we started working from five districts of Nepal and later governance facility also you know joins uh, it joined the hands uh, to scale it up to another five districts and we use storytelling and narrative work in our in our whole work where uh, storytelling and narrative is uh, uh, you know used as a healing for the uh, healing for the survivors of armed conflict And for this particular work, what we did was, you know, uh, as a journalist, because, you know, I, I come from journalism background, I could have gone to the community and I could have, you know, um, uh, put the microphone on and asked with the women who faced uh, violence during armed conflict and asked for their stories. But we didn't want to do that because we have believed that we have a belief that, uh, you know, when uh, women uh, hold the microphone in their hands or when the survivors have microphone in their hands, it will also give power to them and it also creates like, you know, uh, it also replicate that power to other uh, other women. So uh, we uh, applied the approach of women to women and survivor to survivor approach where we provided, you know, a few knowledge and skills on how to do, how to do in-depth interviews and sensitive interviews and how to, you know, record it in a small recorder. So there are, you know, trained women uh, survivors who have now become, you know, justice reporters. They go to the community and they have gathered, you know, more than 1,000 1, plus stories in last two years. And the, the stories of women, uh, they are not the sto just the stories. They are the evidence uh, in the future. It will be evidence in the future. And it is the history, what women, you know, had to face during Nepal's armed conflict. Uh, so we have been working, uh, working like this. And our understanding, um, understanding of you know, it again you know gets links uh, links with the uh, the the overall concept of Dalvis Center that feminism and intersectionality. We are not just talking about women here. We are not just just talking about the women of you know specific group because Nepal is a class and caste based society. So we always you know need to think from you know class caste and ethnic ethnicity and also from the perspective of whether women were educated or not or from which you know geography they belong to or what sexual orientation you know they do have so these are the these are the issues we are also bringing along with it and when we you know bring women together we always make sure that it is not just for you know just for reporting or it is not just for uh, to to say to the world that you know we are bringing but we are very careful about how we can bring uh, uh, all the women together uh, so that it doesn't become again you know within women also it doesn't become only only one group of women coming together all the time uh, so this is what you know we have been looking in our work and when we work with women uh, if you look uh, into the sufferings of women that that happened to women during armed conflict uh, the women who uh, who are from Dalit community, which is, you know, so-called like un untouchable or so-called, uh, you know, lower caste, uh, the society consider them as low caste. Uh, the women from Dalit community and the women from some ethnic communities, uh, they were, uh, you know, victimized by the state. And if you look from other perspective, uh, the women who were considered as, you know, the family members of you know, so-called feudal, the rebel at that time, uh, then rebel, you know, they said the feudal, the women were victimized from that side. So we are trying to bring all these voices and we do believe that uh, even within women, we are working with women, even within women, you know, there are like different uh, intersections we need to look and that intersection, particularly those identities also bring the power with them. Like if I come from, you know, Brahmin, I come from Brahmin community, which, which, def, which you know, uh, like automatically brings such kind of, you know, privilege. So how we, you know, balance that, uh, uh, 
uh, that privilege that comes with identity how we uh, we how we can you know help people to understand about that privilege so that they would start you know realizing that it is the privilege that is helping them to you know exercise that power and power over to others so it is more about you know sharing the power and and also you know working together uh, as as a movement and uh, the 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 heart you know the heart of the sisterhood i would like to you know share one example like you know the the privilege you know it it comes along with the identity and uh, the way people see us as as women in our society we work with uh, women survivors of armed conflict and and when we organize workshops you know we uh, we deliberately plan to uh, bring them in uh, in like different hotels you know because it is most of the time it is residential workshop and when we bring them uh we have until now we have conducted like eight workshops where uh 200 women have already you know come it was like you know uh, 25 women in one uh, each workshop so we have met with you know 200 of uh, these women in you know, in person and we have danced with them you know we have learned their music and now i know like many many you know dialects as well uh so when we bring them you know the first thing they would say is you know we are victims and then you know we don't deserve all this you know good foods we don't deserve this good bed you know to sleep so why don't you take us to the cheapest hotel and then uh, and and that would also you know save money so that it can you know we can use that money to continue our life we totally understand that how how poverty is also there so they have to take care of their children and then poverty is there and and they they are thinking about it is just for 5 days you know they are eating good food but after 5 days what will happen uh, to them and to their family we totally understand that feeling and we are very empathetic about that as well but what we what we think is you know the society the the way society takes women and particularly women you know survivors of violence any kind of violence uh, the society takes it in a way that they don't deserve it and the condition you know they the, the conditioning they have in their mind is we don't deserve this good food uh, so uh, so our understanding is you know different if we bring them to a hotel where there is you know elevator it is also the process of empowerment you know they will uh, the exposure it it empowers them uh, the way you know they get to use the commode in 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 bathroom you know they have never used that before the way they uh, get to use the lock you know the different kind of digital digitized lock system in their door so that would help them to you know realize and and uh, practice which they have never done in their life once there was uh, a program uh, uh, in uh, like outside of kashmandu it was in a hotel and the hotel was bit sophisticated it had all the elevators and when they came we definitely asked with the hotel people to give them the first floor so that they didn't have to uh, go through the elevator all the time because they were scared you know even to seeing that you know elevator it was for the first time they had never seen such kind of elevators in their life before so we had requested hotel people to give them like the rooms uh, all in the first floor uh, so that they could also use the stairs but one day what we what we did was you know we we asked them do you want to try that elevator and then and they said yes because they really wanted it because they really wanted to go there and touch it and then they wanted to uh, get gain that experience so what we did was you know our team members we uh, we stayed with them like you know as group like 10 uh, in his group or five in his group and then we we actually we went together inside the elevator and we also explained how it works and we went up and we came down and you know it was it was a good experience and the the feeling you know i could see in their face while it was like you know uh, going down because the feeling you know the feeling of going down they, they would feel little bit scared but i would say it is not you know going to nothing will happen don't worry so we did that you know practice like many times and it was part of our, part of our workshop it was not like you know so that that is what you know uh, we do and we we think that that exposure uh, is the process of empowerment and another issue you know all the time our participants at the end you know they say that we we felt more than like a family you know uh, the things we haven't been able to share with our family before we just felt that you know we should share it here during the workshop uh, so that that feeling of you know sisterhood that feeling of uh, you know non hierarchy you know the the feeling of bonding 
uh, that gives us power as well. It is not only that, you know, we are working with them, we are listening to their stories. It gives power to all of us. And when women listen to each other's story, they would, uh, they would start saying that I'm not alone. Before this, you know, I, I thought that I was the only one, you know, who faced that kind of violence. But now I feel that I'm not alone. So that is the, that is the most important feeling, uh, feeling that I'm not alone. And another is, you know, uh, before coming here, I used to think that, uh, you know, my, my suffering was the you know, highest suffering. But now, uh, now listening to this other woman, other sister, now I feel that, you know, I'm not in such a very, you know, difficult situation. There are many other women who are going through, you know, so many uh, difficult situations. So these are the these are the things actually we have been, you know, trying to uh, trying to introduce uh, to women so that they feel more powerful. It is not that they are just the victims, you know. They have survived uh, that violence and they are they are continuing their life and they have been they have been, you know, taking care of their children. They have been, you know taking care of their family and they have been living their life you know, they definitely they have sorrow in their heart and there is so much pain uh, they are not getting uh, the medical services they are not getting justice but they have that power to you know survive so we have we have also started after you know uh, meeting with the team at Dolby center and learning about the narrative practice we have also started asking them you know what has helped you to you know survive and how you know powerful they are so we have also been you know trying this uh, uh, new techniques of narrative as therapy uh, because uh, they it also brings that kind of power and when i listen to other person's story uh, then uh, it it not only gives me power but it gives uh, you know it gives more strength to live and then and to sustain